What's going on, everyone? I'm hey. here, Dr. Chad Wolner and Dr. Buddy with undisclosed last, what's your last name? Alan. Alan, that's right. Why don't I know that? <laughs> Dr. Buddy. It's pronounced Alan. 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 And I'm doing this right now. I'm getting some, I'm getting some knee decompression with laser. And it's anyway, amazing. it's amazing. So my buddies over here at Align Integrated Medical are hooking me up. My fellow chiropractors, I messaged Chad on the way home and said, hey, can I stop by and do this? And he's like, sure, come on by. And I said, I, and I got a fun story to tell you too. So here's the fun story. So I, how long was that? Was that like, the truck's got back up. was that like 10 minutes? No, uh, it was about seven minutes. Seven minutes? Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks for doing that. So here's the story. I go in. And I'm not going to name the names of the clinics or anything like that. It's a really good orthopedic guy that I like that I refer to that um, I think is a great doctor. It's more of just the practices of the clinic and feeling as if I have a future in creating coaching programs for orthopedic surgery centers and all clinics because I don't understand how they train their staff or why they think this is acceptable. But here's the first thing. So I walk in to this like prestigious clinic. Do you have a tissue? Because my gum is like turning into mush. And I feel like I'm going to throw up my mouth a little bit yeah. <laughs> on a Facebook live. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Ugh. All right. Sorry about that. So anyway, so what happened here, I'm going to include all you guys on here too. So it make it a little more, a little more fun. Okay. We'll socially distance while we do this. Okay. So now, um, so what happened is I go in and I walk in the front door You get your face mask put on all that good stuff and your hand sanitizer and you walk up to the front and I had to say hello to the front desk person because she wasn't acknowledging that I was standing right in front of her. I, I literally counted like how many seconds. I'm like one, two, three. While she had a conversation with a gal next to her before she acknowledged I was there, I think I said hello to her three times before she finally said, your name? Like that's how she greeted me. And which is like a big no-no. That's not how you greet a we, new patient. Just for the record, we train our staff when people walk in. First question on their mouth is, what do you want? <laughs> That's good. That's, That's what we teach. Good. That's good. Makes you feel great. What do you want and have a total like evil look on their well, face, we right? Do, we do like a what do you want with like a head turn. Like, <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> right. Like, like, like idiot. Why are you standing yeah. here in this clinic trying to like yeah. get services and pay warms, us money for this? Right. So that was the first thing, right? And so being a you know, clinic owner and uh, someone that works with other chiropractors that I, I can't help, I can't turn that off when, when, when I go somewhere. So that was the first thing. So I said hello to her. All right. And then the next step was I said, um, Hey, I have a high deductible insurance plan and I prefer not to use my health insurance. I have an HSA card. Can you tell me what the, what the, amount is yeah, be like estimated. the, yeah, the estimated build amount today for a consultation. I went for a consultation for my knee. I already had an idea of what it was, but I wanted to just go see a guy that I know to see what he said. So anyway, how's it going, Dr. Redman? Okay, so, so then what happens is um, she tells me it's $225 to see the doctor to do an exam, and if they do other stuff, and it would be more. I brought my own x-rays with me and everything and had some knee x-rays, had some wrist x-rays. So then I said, okay, I'm just curious. What is it if you don't have health insurance, if you're, or if you're not going to have health insurance? Oh, well, you have to bill your health insurance because legally we have to bill your health insurance. And I said, okay, I mean, that's probably not accurate and I can talk to your billing department about it, but I'm just curious, how much is it if you don't use health insurance? Oh, you get a 25% time and service discount, which technically is not compliant because that's more than 15% and you have a 10 to 15% window of how much you can that's reduce. Costly. And, and, and in chiropractic, you need Chiro Health USA or you need a compliant reduced fee schedule option to have a secondary fee schedule or that's called having a dual fee schedule. Didn't say that to them, but I was just thinking in my mind, well, I'd rather have the 25% off, not go towards billing my $6,000 deductible, which I don't care to meet anyway, pay with my HSA card and I'd be happy as a clam. She said, you can't do that. And I just said, okay, well, is there someone else I can chat with? So meanwhile, I sent a text message to Dr. Perry Barnhill. Thanks, Dr. Perry, for helping me out. Perry Barnhill is our compliance guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and yeah. he's like, he knows all this stuff. That's yeah. what he does. He's a yeah. coder, compliance, HIPAA, everything, yeah. and, and, and up to recently was a full-time practicing chiropractor, and now he does this full-time. 
So Perry messaged me and he's like, that's probably what they think that they have to do. But technically, if you use this form and he sends me over a form and it's basically like, like a, a protected uh, privacy, something that it says like from this date to this date, I'm not allowing you to disclose any of my information to anyone. And it's also including health insurance. Yeah. And um, so I like save that on my phone and, and, and I'm like, okay, like I'm going to be that guy that has to, you know, but, but on the same note, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm doing this for you guys. Okay. I'm doing this so I can tell a good story. I'm really doing this. Cause I just, I know how we operate with patients and we make it easy. And like, I don't know why other people don't right. They like complicate it. They act like there's rules in place that really aren't. And so anyway, so then I go in for the appointment, you know, go through the appointment yeah, it was cool. Looked at my knee. Didn't really do a whole lot more than I had already tested in our clinic. So I didn't think I had a medial meniscus issue because nothing was positive on orthopedic tests. It seemed like more like a Pez and Serene. What, what orthopedic tests did he do? He did McMurray's. I did, um, what's that one called? Where you, I just, it was off the tip of my tongue. Where you stand, you bend your knee to 20 degrees and you kind of Fessilies. do like Fessilies. Yeah, so like those are ones that I went through on my own that were all negative. I couldn't reproduce any of the pain. Um, but when I contract my hamstring or when I adduct a bit, I can kind of reproduce some of the discomfort. And it feels below the joint line, but it actually is on the superior part of my tibia. So I do think it's a little irritation to that capsule outside the meniscus. But I also think I have some Pez and Serene stuff going on. And so anyway... It was, it was good to see him because I was just curious to get his work up. He's a smart guy. I, I appreciate his feedback. So I have no qualms with his like clinical, you know, going through. And he's like, ah, it's only been bugging you for like three weeks. Wait like four more weeks. Um, something funny that he told me though is he's like, make sure that when you're squatting, don't go past 90 because that's really bad on your knees. And he's telling me that and, and I'm just like going, ah, oh, man. I mean, you know, which like, because there's... Cause I, I've, I, I've studied, but like, you know, he's an orthopedic surgeon and he's a smart dude and he's athletic too. Yeah. And he works with Idaho state athletes and stuff. Right. right. But that's, that is something I don't, I mean, I, I've, I've looked at a lot of the research on that, like for the last couple of years and it's. Well, and, and I think too, there's a, there's a happy medium in the sense that a case can be made for not taking it past 90 while you're load bearing a huge amount. You know what I mean in terms of that? Yeah. And, and uh, the simple question would be, if God didn't intend for you to bend the knee past 90, why did he make a knee that went past 90? Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? and, like, and I mean, granted, he's talking about loading it yeah, w with right. weight and stuff. But on the same note, like, you know, like Pavel Tsatsaluni from Strong First, like, those principles, Gray Cook, Brett Jones, all these functional movement guys, yeah. um, Stuart McGill, uh, Liebenson. I mean, they're all, the, none of them say, hey, don't, don't stop hey, hey, yet. stop, you know, and those guys are like the researcher experts right. of the world. Right. So anyway, so anyway, so what happened is when I go to check out, the girl says, okay, um, so how it works is we'll go ahead and bill your insurance and then we'll send you a bill after that. To which I'm thinking, why do you do that? Okay, so if you're a chiropractor out there watching this, which you gotta be, because you're on this Facebook, chiropractic Facebook page, hopefully. Hopefully to all chiropractors, you can relate to this. If someone, if, if you render a service and you know in the case that the insurance allowed amount for whatever insurance, let's say it's Blue Cross, you know it's a, it's a hundred dollar charge. The insurance pays 80 bucks, charge the patient 80 bucks. Why would you say, well, we're going to bill it. Then we're going to, then we're going to create an extra step to then hunt you down and get you to pay for it. We're going to send you a bill, which we all know love, you know, people are super responsive to writing checks and putting, right. it, it, it creates another step. And you're also training the patient to not make a payment at the time of service, which is opposite of what you want to do. You want them to get in the habit of from day one, paying something yes yes and so they would not take my money so I said uh, well okay so I'll get back on this a little bit so anyway the billing manager comes out and she says yeah we're legally bound to do this all and I said well I'm just curious because I'm a clinic owner we don't do that with our patients we actually have a secondary compliant reduced fee schedule 
that our patients can have access to. We have a time of service discount as well. And if they don't need your health insurance, they don't have to. That's perfectly fine. And um, we do that all the time. And we work with top compliance experts. And we've had this completely vetted. Like, we know it's legit. And I'm just curious, is that different in, like, medicine as it is to chiropractic? Because my understanding is that it's not, right? And now I understand I'm being that guy. I'm being a little difficult, whatever. But I'm trying to seek the truth and see what they say. And so then she says, well, well, can I ask you why you don't want to build your health insurance? And I said, just because like, I'd rather get the time of service discount. She says, well, when we build the health insurance, you'll get access to the reduced fee based on the, the contractual allowed amount. And so I said, oh yeah, I kind of like that kind of like skipped my mind for a second. And I said, what's your contractual allowed amount for an exam? Oh, well, I'm, I don't, I don't know what that is. It's probably about 25% off the normal. And I said, I'm just curious, how do you not know what that number is? I'm like, don't you see other Blue Cross patients? Don't you do these exam codes every single day? Don't you see the EOBs come back? Can't you at least give them a ballpark? Yeah, well, she, well, well, well she, she kind of did, right? But like the 25% or so, right? And then I said, I said, hey, I'm really, I'm really not trying to be difficult. I'm really just kind of like sharing what we do in our clinic. And I'm just curious if there's a reason why you don't do this. We have a spreadsheet. We know all of our top most common fees, codes that we do. We have all the health insurances that we work with. There's like maybe five or six major carriers that we work with and we know what they pay and we charge a patient that. And if it changes, we update it. And she's like, well, we have hundreds of codes. And if that were to happen, we'd be updating this. And I, and I was like, at that point, I'm like, I'm not gonna argue with any further because I just kind of like laid down the whole it's like you have common codes you do. Why don't you just know the amounts, charge the patient? So anyway, and then I just suggested to her, I said, hey, it'd probably be good for you to let your front office people know that if someone has a question like mine before, they can calm them and soothe them pretty quickly saying, hey, we'll bill the insurance. There's a contractual allowed amount and that'll be approximately a discounted rate anyway. So either way, you're okay. It's probably a wash. That slipped my mind, don't know why I did. That was my bad, I admitted that. Like, oh yeah, I should have known that, right? But I was more curious as to why they take such a hard line approach. I'm not doing it, right? So it's basically, they force people to not pay them so that they can create an additional step to then send them a bill to then try to recoup money in the future. Or create unnecessary resistance. Weird. Completely unnecessary Weird. resistance. Yeah. If patients want to give us money, we say thank you, we will take it. Yeah, it just seems like the logical thing. So, so anyway, I wanted to share that with all the other chiropractors out there. I'm curious, comment below. Let me know if that's the way that you guys and gals do it. Do you just have a list of what the insurance contracted allowed amount is? Do you then charge that to your patient? My guess is yes, and my guess also is you're going to have a ton of docs who are like, we just don't even bill the insurance, we just charge cash. Yeah, yeah, t totally. And if it's if your clinic doesn't do insurance, then this question doesn't really apply to you. But if you are doing health insurance, tell me, do you do what they do, which you say, I'm not gonna charge anything, and then you have to go through an extra step of collecting, and you wait two weeks, when you already pretty much know what you're gonna be collecting, based on verifying benefits, because I'm assuming you're all verifying the patient's benefits. Like, I mean, for you guys on a new patient, you verify the benefits before they get there, like while as they're waiting. As quickly as possible. As quickly as possible, right. Yeah. So you can explain to them what they expect. Yeah. Have you noticed, if you've ever gone to any medical clinic, dermatologist, like anywhere else, I've never had anyone do that. I've never had anyone else in healthcare do that. Yeah, it is. It's kind of unusual. And it's kind like of, not once. I, I think it's really interesting because I think with chiropractors, um, this is going to sound like a really strange analogy, but if you've ever heard the story of uh, Br'er Rabbit, you heard the story of our prayer, which I don't know now if, if in today's climate if that's a racist story or not. <laughs> Who knows? Hopefully not. But but my dad. If so up, if so, it's not intentional. I grew yeah exactly right. I grew up my dad telling me stories all the time, bedtime stories, and one of the stories that he told us I don't remember all of it, but I remember the whole idea of Br'er Bear and Br'er Fox throwing Br'er Rabbit in the briar patch, and then when he gets in the briar patch. He just starts laughing because he's like used to the briar patch. Like he was like, "You idiots! I was born in the briar patch. I love the briar patch. I don't care." And and, and the analogy that I'm trying to say is that I think chiropractors are a step ahead because we're used to the struggle of the fact that we're always 
have always been the underdogs, I mean, to, to a large extent. We haven't had the universal acceptance and mainstream compliance and or, uh, call it what you will, brainwashing, <laughs> propaganda, marketing of big pharma promoting us. Which is also part of what makes, I think, a chiropractor's customer service and staff training it's, it's, superior. It, well, and that's the thing is if you look at, if you look at um, consumer reports, they did studies several years back, and I'm sure it's been multiple years. Uh, customer satisfaction for chiropractic is always through the roof, right? Because we were born in the briar patch. We were, we've always been used to the struggle of always having to have customer service top of mind for us because we can't simply rely on. See, that's that's the thing is is and someone else is marketing to drive people in. Not just their yeah. marketing, but just the, dem- norms. the the accepted norms and, and the demand being so high. You know, right, right. We, we we had a, a patient in here the other day. Who needed a referral? Who wanted a referral to a neurologist? And we said, sure, that's fine. They make it six so months di- later. Yeah, they make it yeah. so difficult for anyone to see them. And, and I always think, man, it, it must be nice to be so in demand and so busy that you can afford to not give a crap about mm-hmm. your customers, about your patients. Yeah. Like, and that's is so so foreign to me. But, because, but, but see, know, here's the thing. Here's the thing that I would say knowing chiropractors and knowing how you operate, I operate, all the doctors that you and I both know, it's not in our our personality, yes. our sentiment yeah, yeah, yeah. to be satisfied with the fact that we would have to make a patient wait that long. Like right. that would make us toss and turn at night in bed going like, man, I want to get this person in sooner so I can help them. Yeah, you want to give everybody a, yeah. a, a, a remarkable experience to yeah. put it in Stephen Francis terms. Shameless plug. Shameless plug for the <laughs> Well, okay. Uh, cool. Yeah, thanks for giving your insight on that. That's always nice to hear what you have to say to Chadley Wilmer, Dr. Chad. Cool. So uh, comment. Let me know how you guys do it when you verify someone's benefits. If you're in or out of network with insurance and what you do and what you charge a patient, what your process is, do you create unnecessary steps to then have to hunt them down and build them or do you just charge them? Do you keep a spreadsheet on what the allowable amounts are? If not, hopefully we gave you some good ideas of how to do it. That's best business practices. Uh, Patients appreciate it. You train them to start getting used to making payments when services are rendered. And you don't create additional work for you and your staff to try to hunt them down and collect when you can just collect right when they're there. Anyway, all right, over and out.